So we're here with Brent and he's gonna rip my machine apart. I'm gonna replace the X, Y, and Z bearing and we end up replacing two switches and fixing another switch. So that little 90 degree head is pretty sweet. I've never seen one of those to be honest. Oh, it's clean in there. Look at that. I'm doing sled pushes right now. Yeah. Five or six years ago and they would actually create divots in the cut. It'll get rid of them on the ball bar. So it's better to leave them at zero and let it have the friction. This is the switch in question. See how slow that moves out. Hey guys, Sean here from SV Solo. And today we're gonna rip apart my machine. Actually, I've already ripped apart the machine. We've already done the work. So I'm filming this after, so you'll see me in a different shirt. But if you've seen my ball bar video prior to this, uh, we diagnosed that we had some bearings go out and uh, I'm gonna replace the X, Y, and Z bearing. And we ended up replacing two switches and fixing another switch. So a couple problems along the way, but uh, hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, let's go get dirty. All right, guys, we're here with Brent. He's gonna rip my machine apart. And uh, <laughs> nice to meet you, Brent. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for already digging in. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we have the bearings, end bearings. We have the cartridges. And a couple switches I wanna replace. Here's the other two bearings in here. You said the Z is the worst? It's the it's the most difficult because it's suspended. The ball screw looks good. Yeah, yeah, not bad. All right, covers off, making progress. Oh. Gotta clean the panels. <laughs> so we put them back up. They're nice and shiny. This jam nut pretty much holds everything together. Once you loosen this bolt, then this this whole thing pretty much spins off like a nut. This is the coupler here. These these two things you just loosen, and then the motor will just pull out of this guy. Oh, um, intro. okay, so we're gonna yeah. pull the motor out, okay. So yeah, so the motor is gonna come out. Um, these are the coupling for the motor. This is what pinches the ball screw to the bearing and to the other end of it. So he's gonna block the head so it doesn't fall. Yeah, if you don't have it blocked right too and you remove these bolts. As soon as you take the bolts out, it would spin. Oh, because the weight just pulls yeah, it. Yeah, it'll just wanna, it'll just wanna go down. Oh, look at that. I guess we'll need that later. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like to lose it. That's, why. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> We'd have to make one real fast. This tool is to lock this thing in place so I can break, break the, uh, the top. So you notice as he's jacking, the ball screw is spinning. So now he's got a little tool. Yeah, so I can lock it in place. And then I'll use the mag base to kind of hold it from moving while I go up top and crack it loose. So crack loose this guy, this uh, this nut right here. Once I got it loose, then I'll tighten the jam nut so I can loosen up the bottom one. You have to be extremely athletic to do this job. <laughs> <laughs> this is a young man's sport. No matter, no wonder all the apps engineers that are older are like, I, I just can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this 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 job is a, it's it takes some time. And some back and forth. Alright, so that guy's off. Once we loosen up the other one, the ball screw is completely loose. Free. Yeah, so we can we can screw it up and down, get the bearings out, screw it down, get the bearing out of the top, replace it, screw it back up. We'll put the nut back on top, take this guy out, replace it, and then Do you used to work at a machine shop? Uh, I actually worked for the factory, the okay. Haas factory, for 15 years. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. That's the bearing we're going to replace. And now that now that we got that out, this thing can spin down. So you just pulled out the bottom bearing. That's the less uh, Load, I yeah. guess, loaded. Less loaded yeah. It's just support. I'm going to back this thing. Yeah, this ball screw feels good. It's definitely your end bearings. Nice. Because if you... If you if it was bad and we started to spin it, it uh -huh. would just start to go down. It lost all its preload. Oh right, okay, it's not very tight. Yeah, exactly. So if you have the preload in it, which means that um, this thing does, um, that means it's going to be tight. There's not going to be a lot of backlash in it. Um, I don't know if you can see from up top there. We just backed it out. Backed it out, and then we're going to pull that that bearing out of the top of it and then right. replace it. There it goes. Oh, the universal tool, the yeah. hammer. Oh, I've got a little plastic mallet. 
Helps me get stuff out. That's tight. That's good. There it is. Yeah, there it is. That's the old style one. And that spacer that we have will make up the dis difference between the, the new okay, style gotcha. one. Yeah. Rubbing my um my finger in here, I can feel it. You can? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. This is definitely bad. <laughs> 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 These are the things that fail on not the ball screw. Yeah, which is good. Like I mean yeah. I'm pretty stu I'm it's gonna be nice to hear this thing like real like nice. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean if I'm gonna dig into this thing, I'm like gotta do all I'm just gonna do them all. I mean it's twenty two years old, like yeah, why yeah. not, you know? Yeah, exactly. Especially the ball screws are decent yeah so these things um have shims in them from the factory and so we'll put these back in okay when we put this guy in so what happens is um at the factory they they uh set these ball screws up and they'll run an indicator along the top of the ball screw so they'll put an indicator on the on the guide rail and then they'll indicate the ball screw all the way through and if it has any kind of up and down motion they'll shim it to make it dead nuts so it's flat so the ball screw is running yeah perfectly so no parallel. binding so it's yeah the shim would go is it going yeah it's going here and so it's shimming it um yeah oh, okay. towards us but basically giving it a little bit more height yeah, this one probably almost yeah yeah well, i have a tool that i put on here and i'll i'll put it in tap place you more it tap it yeah, in yeah exactly I'll, I'll typically use one of these plastic pieces so i hit the outer race because yeah um, you don't want to, you don't want to hit the inner race. You want to keep it on the outer race. Right. So sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it catches yeah. the edge when you're doing it. So I'll use the older bearing to stick it on there and then make sure that it's sitting all the way flat against it. Should be good. Yeah. All right. Inventory check. We have this piece. You said we don't use the black one. He's never had to use that one in this these type of models and machines, but I already had the bearing in. This is the spacer and the shims. This plastic will be hammered in from the bottom side until it sits flush against it. So this one will go into the casting. This one will go up. And then this one will just sit on the ball screw. And when you screw it up, it'll go right kind side. of yeah, mesh in place. You gotta be extra careful with these machines. Yeah, because anything can drop in there. Yeah, chips everywhere. Okay. Okay, this is this. You wanna be doing this by hand too, because you wanna make sure it goes freely. Yeah. It goes in there smoothly and doesn't get caught in anything on the way. Pretty close. So I'll get all four of these bolts in there. And then slip and the shims in the back. The shims and then the, uh, the pins. All right, pins. Yeah. Don't want to forget the pins. Yeah. Grab the shims. Sometimes you can, the shim will be in the way of the pin. Pins are in. Yeah. So now you, the jam nut up top here, is that what you're doing? Yeah. The jam nut is sucking the whole ball screw up. So I gotta make sure that I'm not sucking up and the, the nut on the other side is not pulling the bearing with it. So I'm gonna loosen that, loosen that um, nut up a little bit more because it feels like it's starting to pull it. So gotcha. you gotta be careful when you're doing these. Um, just be really attentive to what you're doing. Can't be any more careful than hiring someone else to do it. So the top is done then? Yeah, the top is torqued. And now I just gotta, um, Rotate it around so I can tighten the pinch nut. I basically need to rotate this thing around until I can see the pinch nut. So as he jacks his head up, you can see that it's moving the ball screw. And that's how he's orienting 
the clamp bolt. Yeah, you get to the it. Pinch bolt. So what'd you say this one was torqued to? Uh, seven. Seven, so pretty light. So see how that's off right there? Yep. I'm gonna basically rotate it around the ball screw until it lines up. Cause this one, it's got a break on it. The other ones don't, you can just kind of pop oh, them in I see. there. So he's gonna jack this up just to rotate. There it is. Right there. All right, we gotta clean this thing up. He's gonna be ready for it at some point. Good enough. Man, that sounds way better. Yeah. I'm going to loosen up the nut housing and then kind of float it in. Um, it doesn't have any load on it, but I just want to make sure that um, it's got the best uh, alignment for longevity. So run it up and down and run up and down, kind of get it centered in place. Once it's centered in place, then we'll torque it in. See how nasty it is in here. That's why I love these trays. Oh, not, oh, not too bad. Yeah. That's wow. pretty good. Yeah, this thing is. This thing is. Dude, that little 90 degree head is pretty sweet. I've never seen one of those, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, it looks clean in there. Look at that. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, this axis you can move. Oh, yeah. by, okay. Yeah, the so other. It makes it way easier. Yeah, exactly. You can just move stuff around super easy. How's it feel? Good. Feels really good. So, in order to do the y axis, he has to uh, pull this bad boy off the lube tray. So, right now, he's taking off the lube line because you can't get the thing to hang. It's jammed in there, so I'm going to have to remove it from the lube panel side. So now he's breaking loose the motor. Yeah, you got to pull this off, and then I'll jump around and loosen up that coupler. He's doing sled pushes right now. Yeah. Cool. This little tool here, just like doing the Z, doesn't allow it to spin. So there's that uh, spacer. The coupler spacer. Yeah. He's got the bearing coupler in there now. New coupler is in. All right, I guess we're ready to ball bar this thing. Check it out. He's got all three axes done. It'll give you an accurate me measurement. There it is. So these spikes right here are, are normal. When you replace or add new ball screws, they're called friction spikes. So you'll get these um, and they'll kind of move away as the machine breaks in, they'll kind of break in. These friction compensation, you actually want these at zero. I did a test, I don't know, um, five or six years ago, and they would actually create divots in the cut. It'll, it'll get rid of them on the ball bar, but what happens is when it comes around, friction compensation is kind of the extra nudge when it's starting. So it's better to leave them at zero and let it have the friction because you're not going to have that digging in the edge mm -hmm. in the cut. So 138, I always make sure they're at zero. All right, so the ball bar is in. Yep. Looks pretty good. All right, guys, we're back for day two. Kind of ran into a few other issues. Um, we're going to replace two cables and maybe look at the, is that an actuator? Is that what, what's that thing called? Yeah, so the tool release piston. Um, it's just a little slow to 
hit the unclamp yeah. button. So. so I changed the switches in the turret, but it didn't help my uh, sticking because it would like go in and then stop the shuttle. So he's going to check that out. But usually that's caused by like maybe rust or yeah, this. It's typically air uh, water in the lines. Water in the lines, it's okay. Dish. That's what we're doing today. And I have a new uh, shirt. Thanks, Evis. Or uh, and as for the new blue blue shirt, matches my hat. <laughs> so right now he's taking the Y switch off. Pulling this guy out. And that is the Y switch. Yeah. Where did it plug into? I'm um, down here. Oh, interesting. Okay, it's so got, a little, got a little junction area. Okay. Yeah, okay. Pretty simple. So because I unplugged the switch, the machine recognized it. So I have to do setting 53, jog without zero return. Oh, so there's a break in the cable right there. Couple of them, yeah. Oh yeah, there's a few of them. Every once in a while it won't home properly. So new cables going in. And if you guys are gonna do the X cable, it's 10 feet. And then the Y cable is six feet. Oh, it's like a rubber flashing. It's it's plastic, so it, there's no there's no movement in it. You just gotta get all the cables in there. So you just put this plastic piece in there. Just keeping these guys um, together because there's no channel on these guys. On the newer style ones, they have like a a track, and these don't have a track. So so whenever you replace your cables, you gotta set the reset the grid axis. So it bumps proper. Um, it's got to come off the motors uh, a certain distance, so it's not close to zero on the motor, or else it'll trip out. See how they both are at one? They shouldn't be like that. Should be opposites. And then eventually it turns to zero. That's the issue. Yeah. So, so this one right here is. Super, super slow. This is the switch in question. See how slow that moves out. It's all sticky. All right, I cleaned it up, threw some WD-40 in there, and then I cleaned it out with IPA, but it's super fast now. Should be good. When I seal these covers up, I use a... I use like a black RTV. Oh, black RTV? Uh, yeah. I like to use the gasket maker. This is a silicone-based one. Thanks, Brent. Yeah, no I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Brent from Northwest CNC, extremely busy dude. Uh, yeah. Only wants the good customers. So, <laughs> but I do appreciate it. There's no way I could have done this by myself. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. <laughs> All right, man. It was a pleasure. All right, she's All ready right. to go. All right, thank you. All right. All right, we made it through another episode of How We Do It. <laughs> that was kind of a doozy because there's no way I could have done that myself. Thanks, Brent, for coming out. Like, honestly, it probably would have took me three weeks to try and figure that out and probably would have broke it anyway. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, now you know, don't work on your own stuff. Just hire someone out to do it. <laughs> See you on the next one. Later.